welcome to the shop with Woodworking with Wes. Today we're doing a project for my own home. I have this piece of rustic cherry that I glued up. I'm making an entry table for the entry of my home. I glued it all together so that I knew what size it was and now I'm going to show you how we build our table. Before we get started we're going to do the top out of cherry but we're going to do the legs out of Peruvian black walnut. This is all my pieces that I've started cutting for my legs and I kind of wanted to show you this is American black walnut and this is Peruvian black walnut. Peruvian black walnut of course you can see has a little red and it's a much finer grain. There's one trick about Peruvian black walnut or or cork I should say it's not a trick it's a quirk. When you lacquer this it goes just almost black, almost like ebony black. That creates a problem when we start nailing things together because you have to compensate somehow for the fact that there is no putty that's perfectly black like this will be. So we're going to try to put this together without nails showing to the face side. We'll show you how we do that. Okay, getting ready to build our table, I glued up my pieces and sized it the size that I wanted to have for my entry. And then I did a, a little thing that I do quite a bit when I do a one-time piece furniture. I flipped it over and I drew my sizes on my, my layout on the actual back of my top so that I knew exactly where everything went. I made a little rough sketch right here. You can just kind of see my little rough sketch. This is basically what I want to have. I want to have a, a post and post and there's going to be a little drawer. This is the front side right here of my table. But then I went through and I drew it out full size. Here's my corner post in the back. There's my corner post in the front and it has six legs. There's back and then there'll be four across the front and a drawer in between the two center legs on the front. And so I, I drew this all out full size so that I knew exactly what I wanted to cut. And then that told me what my measurements were without trying to do a detailed drawing and then working it out for my table. This told me exactly what I needed to do. Like any table, we start with the legs. And I started with the back legs. Our back leg is three inches wide and two thicknesses of lumber thick, but I want to dado my skirt in it. So this is what I ended up with. And, and if you put my leg right there, that's where it fits right there. We're having a three inch skirt and I want the corner of my skirt to be hidden inside this dado because I don't want to have any nails showing. So I have my nailing inside this corner here. And so that was the first thing I needed to do. I put it together. Here's my other one. After we put it together, we'll sand it, we'll round the corners, and it'll end up looking just like that. Our front leg is a little different. It's much thicker. And so we started off with a four inch wide piece with a three inch wide piece in the front of it. But then as I was beginning to put it together, I noticed I was inch and a half thick back here, but I wasn't here. So I made an additional piece to go like this. And that will now make my front leg. And it'll go just like that. So that's what we'll do next. Now, I, was, I talked about hiding the nails. We didn't get to hide the nails on this one because I forgot to put the piece, or not forgot, but decided to add the piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to just use some headless pins. We're going to glue and clamp this extra piece on. That will, that's what we'll do first before we go on to our center leg. And we'll show you how we do our center leg in just a minute. By clamping the two legs together after I nailed and glued, or glued and nailed, um, that pulls those joints good and tight and uh, we'll let that dry now and move on to our front leg in the center. We're now going to work on our center front leg right here. It's a little different. Our side front leg had, uh, it, we added an extra piece here. That was the piece we just glued on. So it's three thicknesses, but this is our skirt level right through here and we're actually going to be one level out because this is going to, this level was behind our skirt 
this is now the level, brings this out another level. We also have our drawer right in here. This is going to be our face frame level right here, and our drawer box fits right here. That's what this is right here. This is our little drawer box. This is what our drawer face looks like. It's face frame. This is going to be where our drawer guide sits right here, um, right on this little level right here. This piece right here is actually going to go between the skirts, and that's going to become a mounting bracket for our countertop or for our tabletop. So we'll screw through here into the bottom side of this table so tabletop. This little notch in the back is where our back skirt runs from post. So anyway, this is our little drawer box. It goes in the middle of here, and I'm going to show you how we put the seam of this drawer box right behind our post so again, we don't have any filling and we can nail it from the back side. You won't see any nails. We're getting ready to do our center leg now. It'll be a three-piece leg. This is the back piece, this is the center piece, this is the front piece. I have sanded and rounded these pieces because once it's put together, you can't. Now we can sand and round the back piece after we get it put together, but you can't sand and round these. I went ahead and nailed this one together. It fits together like this. This additional piece will go over the top of this, and you can see now why I rounded, but you can also see that it covers the nails so that we don't have to worry about having to fill nail holes but that piece goes together like that, and that becomes our center piece. Now, I wanted to talk to you about the fact that we had a skirt and a face frame coming together on the back side. That's what this notch is for. This is the inside of the table. This is our skirt piece. Here's our little drawer box piece and face frame. This is our hanging cleat to our uh, tabletop. This is where our drawer will be. This is the bottom of the cabinet. This is the top of the cabinet. And you can see how our joint and our fastening is all going to be hidden to the inside of the cabinet. We'll do that next. Okay, we're now getting ready to put on our face piece, our third level. And that goes on top like that and covers the nail holes. Now, I made a little spacing jig. I wanted this to be, this piece is four inches, this piece is three inches, so I want a half inch. Being as it's dark and I don't want to have anything on there, I just made me a little spacing jig. And I'm going to show you how this little spacing jig lit works. This is a half inch. I put that on top of that. I take another little piece of scrap that I can hold tight against my wood, and then I just pull tight, pull tight, and now I'm spaced exactly a half inch with a little jig, and I don't have to make any marks. I'm perfect, and then I can nail right down the center of this board because those nail holes will be hidden also, and I haven't showed you yet that yet piece yet, but I'll show you that in a little bit. But We're gonna nail right down the center. We're gonna put some glue on there, nail right down to the center, using our little spacing jig, and that will complete the majority of our center leg. While our legs, our front center legs, are clamped and drying, we took our side front legs out of the clamp. We're now going to sand and round the back sides of these. And then these legs will be ready to go, just like our back corner leg is. So we're going to do our sanding and routing now. Okay, we have our four corner posts 
sanded and, and routed and ready to go. We have our two center front posts in clamps still. And so now we're going to work on the skirt. The skirt is a, just a three inch by three quarter inch piece, but we have to measure and work it out. If you remember, we have our corner right here inside of our post. So by taking our measurements of how far back and how much thickness and everything like that, we determined that our post needs to be 46, I mean our, our back skirt needs to be 46 and 7 eighths of an inch long. Um, what I did is I took my measurement up to where my end was and then the thicknesses because the, the skirt is going to go together like this and by putting all those measurements to, and adding them all together I, I determined that it was this distance I measured back from my edge and that gave me the distance of my post so if you put my post I mean my skirt right there you'll notice it comes right to that line so that's how I did that and then the skirt on the side goes from inside of post to inside of post inside of our notches We'll just cut those off. So we'll cut those three. We've got this one cut already. We'll cut these two to that length. And then that will give us three sides of our skirt. Then our front skirt is a short piece here, a short piece here, and our face frame with our uh, drawer box. So we'll put these, we'll get these milled out first and put those three sides together first. We have the three sides of our skirt. This is actually the back side of our skirt. Our uh, little drawer box is going to fit in like that. In order to get the length of our two little side pieces of skirt, all we do is we take our back measurement, which was 46 and 7 eighths, minus our face frame divided by two. And we'll do that now. We have our skirt together now, but we can't finish our assembly until we start putting the legs on. These are our last two legs that we have to sand out. We're going to sand those out now. They go here, and then the other four legs go on the corners. We'll put our drawer piece in. We've completed our posts. We put our skirt together. This is our drawer section. We're going to go ahead and do the assembly. We're going to put our front posts together with our face frame and then we'll put everything together on the skirt. We're just going to nail and use screws. We're not going to glue this together. We're just going to use nails and screws and put it all together. We'll turn it upside down and we'll assemble it upside down and from inside out. No nails. On our assembly, we added these two pieces to screw our, our tabletop through. I needed a piece out here on each end and I forgot to put it in. We'll do that first before we continue to put the legs on. We have the legs on. You saw me just put the top on just to see kind of what it would look like. One of the things that I've decided to do that I hadn't planned on, 
I'm going to put a little secondary skirt through here and a shelf down low. I hadn't planned on that, but I'm going to do that. So we're going to, to stop and make another skirt and another shelf before we do this. Our drawer goes here. And then at the very end, we have a little decorative strip that is really going to highlight these legs. So wait and watch for that. Okay, welcome back to day two of our uh, entry table. We talked yesterday about putting a skirt in here and a shelf. I've installed the skirt now. You can see what we did. We put a small inch and three quarter skirt. I've added some hanging cleats in here to hang at the top. That solved two problems for us. Not only did it give us a little more design feature, but once I started putting it in, it also helped to tighten up and straighten the legs. Don't be afraid to let your furniture piece tell you what it needs. Allow a little inspiration as you build. Um, I always used to say that when I built mantles, they evolved on my bench because as I was building, they told me what they needed. Same with furniture sometimes. Allow that to happen. Allow your, your wood, your furniture piece to tell you what it needs. So that's what we did here. We added the, the, the shelf. This is actually the shelf. Um, I made it a little thinner than the top shelf and I notched around the legs so that this fits comes out here a little bit and it will just look really nice. We're going to lacquer without the legs or without the shelves in so that we can get a better lacquering job. But we're, we, we're all done. We're all sanded. The only thing we have to do now is to add these little strips to the face of the, of the front columns that I was talking about. If you get real close with our video, you'll notice that there are nail holes. And we talked about nailing from the inside out so that we didn't have any nail holes, but our last piece had to have nails. And so what we did is we made a little strip of cherry that we're going to attach with some headless pins and put some putty on. And we're going to attach this little face strip right down the center of each one of these columns. So it'll give a little feature across the face of each one of these, a little decorative strip. And then our cherry shelf, our cherry drawer face, and our cherry top will match our cherry strip. We're going to put those on now, sand them, and then head to the paint shop. Now this little jig that I made, it's just a little couple of pieces of scrap nailed together, allowed me to not have to measure as I was installing and get my little strip perfectly centered. This is one inch wide, this is three inches wide, my little jig held it over an inch. Made it easy to nail on. Okay, we just finished all our sanding. Now it's off to the paint shop and I'll meet you back here at the bench for final assembly. Back at the workbench, we've completed the lacquering portion of our uh, entry table. This is the shelf, this is the top cabinet. We've installed our drawer, and if you want to remember how to build a drawer, don't forget to look at our video on how to build drawers. We've installed it on a full extension side guide. But we're going to go ahead and complete our assembly. Let's go that far and then take a look when it's all done.
I hope you've enjoyed our video on building an entry table. It's been a fun project and kind of challenging. I even learned some things. I hope you'll learn some things too. My wife even likes it. That's the ultimate approval. But anyway, it's turned out to be a nice piece and we look forward to building more nice pieces on our videos and showing you the skills that you need to learn and teaching you some things and hopefully learning some things from you on woodworking with Wes.